The idea in this video is not particularly uh, new. We've, we've seen this before, but we, we didn't use the same vocabulary then that we're going to use for it now. Let me back up again a little bit and remind you, um, let's say we have a system that looks like this. Negative x1 plus 6x2 minus 2x3 equals 0. And then negative 3x1 plus 12x2 plus 2x3 equals negative 18. And negative 6x1 plus 24x2 minus 2x3 equals negative 18. Now we said at the very beginning of the course that we could write this system of equations as a matrix. In fact, as an augmented matrix, by simply noting that the coefficients and then the constants, we'll put the constants in their own column. Negative 3, 12, 2, negative 6, 24, negative 2. And these constants are both negative 18. So that's one way to write a system of equations. And if I wanted to solve the system of equations, I could perform elementary row operations on these, uh, on these rows to get it into reduced echelon form. And then I could just read off the, the solution. The thing is, some of our systems are going to be much bigger than this. And so we need another approach. And one of the ways we handled this in the past, in fact, this was in section 2.3 which was called representing a system of linear equations as a matrix equation. So we're going to establish a matrix equation here. And essentially what that means is that the first thing we're going to do is copy the right, the left hand side into its own matrix. And then we will copy the column matrix containing the constants 0, negative 18, negative 18, into its own matrix. It's a column matrix. Now this is a number here, this negative x1 plus 6x2. x1, x2, and x3 are in the real numbers. So if I take the opposite of one number, add it to 6 times a second number, and subtract 2 times a third number, that's going to be a number. And matrices are only equal. This matrix is only equal to this matrix if, first of all, it has the same dimensions, which is 3 by this is one number, one number, one number. So this is a 3 by 1 matrix. And this is a 3 by 1 matrix, so they might be equal. And then the other thing that they need to be equal is that component-wise, the components need to be equal. So this first column here, sorry, this first row here has to match this first row here. Well, because the variables are in here, I don't know I don't know that it does, but I can find the variables, in most cases, that will make it true. So all I've done so far is to rewrite this system of equations into two matrices, but the properties of matrices let me do that. Matrix addition lets me write the left-hand side of this matrix equation this way. Negative, negative x1, negative 3x1, negative 6x1, in one column matrix plus 6x2, 12x2, and 24x2 in a separate, separate column matrix. And then I'm going to have in my third column matrix here, negative 2x3, positive 2x3, and negative 2x3. All I'm using here is vector addition backwards. And I'm just copying my right hand side. OK, so that is uh, going from this line here to this line here. It says matrix addition backwards. If I gave you this problem here on the left hand side and said combine these, then by matrix addition, I would get negative x1 plus 6x2 plus negative 2x3, and that's exactly what I have here. So I've just used matrix addition backwards. Now I'm going to use matrix multiplication, scalar multiplication backwards, because x1 is a number, 
I just don't know what it is. X2 is a number, X3 is a number. I'm going to effectively cancel or factor out that X1, that value of X1, and put it there. And I'll do the same for each of these three vectors. Oh, I forgot my x2 there. So I factored out the, I've unscalar multiplied that vector by x2, the value x2. And there's x3. Okay, and one last step here, I'm going to have to move here to do this one, is I'm going to represent the x1, x2, x3 as a vector as well. So I'm going to leave myself some space, and, and then I'm going to say x1, x2, x3, that vector right there, when left multiplied with something else, gives me the vector 0, negative 18, negative 18. And what I'm going to left multiply it with is the matrix made up of the column vectors where I got my coefficients. And I can do that because uh, of matrix multiplication. So let's see, I'm going to do this backwards so that I have the right amount of space in my matrix. 6, 12, and 24, and negative 1, negative 3, and negative 6. Generally speaking, I would call a matrix like this, a coefficient matrix, A, or some other capital letter. Uh, I would call this matrix X. Uh, it's a vector. Now we can talk about it as a vector. So you might see it with the bar over it or a half, half arrow. And then I'm going to say this is also a vector, but it's a vector of constants. It's a column matrix, as, a, as is uh, the X. These are both column matrices. But in the context we're working with them now, they're, they're vectors. This is what we did in the previous, well, it's actually a couple of chapters ago. Um, we talked about a, this as a, an alternative way to write a system of equations. I've taken this system of equations here, and I've written it as a matrix equation. A matrix times a vector full of uh, variables equals a vector full of constants. If I back up to this line right here, though, I can use this form for what I want to do next. Let's put another line off to the side here. And um, I want to rewrite the, reestablish the relationship that I see here using similar notation to what I did up here. But instead of a matrix A, all I have in this form before I took that last step is several column matrices. So I'm going to write this as A1. That looks like the first column of matrix A. That's exactly what it is. This one is A2 and this one is A3. And then I'm going to have X1, X2, and X3. Of course, this is multiplication and we're adding those together. And then notice that if I leave the x's out, I get something that looks like this, a1, a2, a3. And I'll put b here. I didn't put my b here. I'll do that. I'll put b here. If I then make that into a matrix, let's call it an augmented matrix, then hopefully you can see the relationship here. Relationship. What I've called A1 here, the first column of matrix A, matrix A is here, and it's the just the coefficient matrix of our augmented matrix here. So if I name these columns A1, A2, and A3, they're just A1, A2, and A3, the coefficients of X1, X2, and X3, then that column matrix is represented by A1. That column matrix by A2, that's this one here, and A3. So all I've really done is written my, my augmented matrix in a slightly more 
compact, convenient form. But a1, a2, and a3 are vectors, and in fact, they're vectors in R3. It turns out that x, the vector x, that's made up of my variables, x1, x2, x3, is a solution to this matrix. And this matrix is simply another way to write, well, this matrix equation without, without the variable. This was Remember, this was the solution to this matrix equation. It's the same thing. It's really the same thing. And so this matrix, sorry, this, um, this vector, my, this vector of my variables is the solution to my original system of equations. Now that assumes that this vector exists. It, it assumes that we can find a vector that will satisfy, where shall we look, this matrix equation or this, this arrangement here, right, or this uh, augmented matrix. If we can find the values that will do that, if, a, if this vector exists, then that vector is a solution to the system of equations. But here's the punchline, at least in the context of this section. This vector is a linear combination of the vectors in this matrix. This, this column vector, which was here, and A2, the column vector A2, and A3, and B. This vector is a linear combination of A1, A2, A3, and B. To find this vector, all I need to do is solve this augmented matrix or solve this matrix equation. I'm looking for the specific numbers x1, x2, and x3 that render this statement true. And I know how to do that. I've known how to do that since the very beginning of the quarter. In this particular case, that vector turns out to be 0, negative 1, negative 3. And if you replace x1 with 0 at any point in this process, right? at, at any stage in the, in the evolution of this system of equations into a matrix, into a matrix equation in it, or into a matrix, if you replace x1 with 0, x2 with negative 1, and x3 with negative 3, the result will be 0, negative 18, negative 18. So this is just another way to look at systems of equations, uh, rewriting them, writing them in multiple different ways, right? All I really need here is the original system. The augmented matrix is one way to write it. I've done a lot of work here to show that another way to write it is as a matrix equation. And we've got now another way to write it. We can also look at this line here to realize that this claim that I've just made that x is a, uh, the x vector is a linear combination, we can see here that this x1, x2, x3 is embedded in here. A, this uh, matrix times one number plus this matrix, sorry, this vector times one number plus another vector times a second number plus a third vector times a third number gives me a vector. This is a linear combination. Okay, and we say that this vector x is a solution to the system of equations represented either in either any of these forms um, is a solution and it's a linear equation of these vectors, right? These column matrices which are vectors. One of the ways in which you'll meet this is that you'll be given vectors a1, a2, a3, or however many are appropriate for the particular system that you're working with, and a vector b, and asked to find the weights of x1, x2, and x3, or however many variables are appropriate here, that makes the system true, that solves the system, given the vectors a1, a2, a3, and b, find x1, x2, x3. So we're really doing the same thing as we did way back at the very beginning of the course. We're really just giving it a new set of vocabulary parameters and a new way of uh, representing 
the notation here is, is, is quite different, but really all the same stuff is in each of these different forms.